This is Evan with EB3D Printing. Are you struggling with your first layer on the Ender 3 V2? Well then stay tuned because this video is for you. In this video I'm going to discuss the procedure I use to level the bed on the Ender 3 V2 as well as some tips or tricks I've learned over the time with the machine that helped me get a better first layer adhesion. I promise you those tips will not include one of these. So let's toss that aside and let's get into what this video. All right, so before we get too far into this, I just want to point something out that you could follow all of the next steps perfect to a T and still end up with layer adhesion issues due to no fault of your own. This is because Creality's glass plates are known to ship warp. How we verify this is we take a straight edge and run it cross corner on the glass plate. If you see a gap between the straight edge and the glass plate, unfortunately, you have a warped bed as you can see from my glass plate. It took me many failed prints to figure this out. And it was quite frustrating to the point to where I almost gave up 3D printing. But I just wanna point this out to make you aware of it, that it's not an end all be all. It's not like, oh, you can't print at all. It just takes a little bit of work to get around this warped glass plate. So without further ado, let's get into leveling the bed. The first step to ensuring proper print adhesion to the build plate is to make sure we have a clean print surface. To do this with the Creality glass bed, I just use regular old Dawn dish soap. Make sure I clean both sides. I use warm water to uh, rinse it off with some paper towels to dry it. It's very simple, straightforward, gets the job done. I make sure to clean both sides of the build plate because depending on what material I'm printing, I can use either side of the build plate. The next cleaning agent that I use is regular old 91% IPA. I just put this into a clear spray bottle, made sure I labeled it, that way I know what it is. And then I just spray a few sprays onto the build plate. This is really good for getting finger oils off of the bed. And once it's sprayed, I just wipe it down with a dry paper towel and it's good to go. The next step to ensuring proper bed adhesion is making sure all the moving parts are snug. So starting with the Y axis, we'll tighten the two eccentric nuts that hold the bed palm wheels in place. You want these snug, but not tight. You wanna be able to freely move the bed without any restriction. Next up, we'll do the X axis. There's one eccentric nut we have to worry about, and this one is underneath the X gantry. So you just tighten that up, make sure that's snug. Last up is the Z axis. There are two eccentric nuts. I'll only show the one, but they're on the inside of the frame. Again, you'll want to tighten this up to where it's snug, but you can still freely move the palm wheel and turn it by hand. Next up, we are going to check the X gantry level and how we're going to go about doing this is tramming it to this bottom frame here on both sides. Uh, how we're going to go about doing that is we're going to take two objects of identical height. I use a failed print that I broke in half and one piece goes on each side. One note though is do not move the X gantry by the X arm. You'll want to use the stepper motor and turn the lead screw in the back to move the stepper arm. This ensures the right side of the frame stays level with the left. So first up, we're gonna take one object and put it on the left side and lower the X canter down by the lead screw. Once that's snug, we'll take the second object and slide it into the right side. What we're feeling for here is the same amount of friction between both pieces and the X canter. If the friction is lower on the right hand side, that means there's more of a gap that means we have to lower the right side of the X gantry. If there's more friction, we have to raise the right side of the X gantry. Once we have both sides at the relative same friction amount, we go ahead and verify this by using a set of calipers. And how we're going to verify is to measure between the bottom frame and the bottom of the X gantry. For the left side here, we get a measurement of 119.10. Sorry, it is a little blurry. And then on the right side here, we get a measurement of 119.12. For me, two hundredths of a millimeter is close enough to level. All right, 
Before we start the leveling process, first thing we're going to want to do is preheat the printer. Uh, to do this, you got to prepare, preheat, and then scroll down to PLA. It's the typical material I use to print at. After the bed and nozzle get up to temperature, we'll want to go back to the manual leveling menu. So we'll select manual leveling and this will home the printer. After the printer homes will be displayed with a screen that shows different positions on the bed. Bottom left and bottom right correspond with the front of the printer or the side that's closest to you. Top left and top right correspond to the back of the printer and center well is center. So we'll pick bottom left here as our first position to start and the printer will move into position. I use a plain old piece of white printer paper for this. Um, you can some people use uh, feeler gauges. I prefer a piece of paper and then fine tune it with Z offset once I get it close. But you put the piece of paper under the nozzle and adjust the knob until you feel the paper vibrate between the nozzle and the bed. This is a pretty much perfect indication that the knob is adjusted to the right position. Next up, we'll move to the top left and repeat the feeler process with the piece of paper. After the top left is the top right, and again, repeat the process of sliding the paper between the nozzle and the bed until you feel that vibration. Next up is bottom right. Now these next few corners are gonna be a bit different. I do them caddy corner, kind of like tightening the lug nuts on a wrench, where you don't wanna go around the circle, you wanna go across the bed to diagonal corners to adjust them accordingly. I will put the order I use for the corners in the description. That way you don't have to come back and watch the whole video to follow along. After we do caddy corner, we go counterclockwise, which is opposite of the original direction we went. We start with the bottom right and go around backwards. So after three passes of each corner, we should have a relatively decent leveled bed. Just make sure that piece of paper is snug between the nozzle and the bed. You don't want it to buckle, but you want to feel like a slight vibration. Once you get the feel for it, you'll have it down and you'll be good to go from here on out. And next up is a test print to see how well we leveled the bed. So as this level test finishes up here, I just want to point out there, there's nothing fancy going on. I don't have my BL touch on. I'm not using a manual mesh. I just followed all the steps that I went over previously in this video to, you know, make sure the bed's clean and make sure it's properly leveled. And once this print finishes up here, we'll go over and I'll check all the squares and we'll see how well it did. Just following basic steps that you can do right out of the box. So we'll start here with this bottom left hand corner and we'll check all the squares. But I just want to point out that all the squares stuck almost perfectly. The center one is a little bit high because of, you know, the warped plate. But it just goes to show that with proper cleaning and a proper leveling procedure, you can get a good first layer, even with the warped glass plate. Well, that's it for this video on the Ender 3 V2 bed leveling. I hope you were able to pick up at least one tip that will help you with your first layer adhesion. But stay tuned for my next video where I go over manual mesh leveling on the Ender 3 V2 to help you get that even better first layer. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I appreciate all the feedback I've been getting from uh, viewers and the comments to help me improve these videos for the 3D printing community. If you like this video and would like to see more from me, well, you know what to do. If you would like to support this channel and help me grow, I have links to do so in the description. As always, that's enough for me. I'll see you in the next one.